Hi, everybody. Um, so by far the trickiest part about understanding classical conditioning is using the language of classical conditioning to talk about different specific examples of it. Pavlov got to establish the language that we use to talk about this stuff. Um, and it's not too tricky, but it does take a little bit of practice. So uh, I'm about to recommend your second psychology themed tattoo. You already have the correlation doesn't equal causation one. Uh, well, this next diagram we're going to look at is so important. I would tattoo that down myself as well, because um, no good AP psych exam is not going to have questions about this. Uh, and we're definitely going to be practicing applying it. In fact, in a moment, you'll get a worksheet that um, will help you get some practice uh, applying this. So first up, uh, if we think back to Pavlov's uh, classic example of this, where he was teaching dogs to salivate at the sound of a bell. Um, we always start out when we're doing classical conditioning um, with a, a relationship between two things that are unlearned. And that's why we refer to them as an unconditioned stimulus and an unconditioned response. Oh, we're being joined here by my buddy Ron Swanson. This is our new little kitty. Um, he really likes classical conditioning. Um, so we always start out with uh, an unlearned relationship. So we call this unconditioned because there's no, it's an automatic responsive response to something. Oftentimes it's reflexive. It's something that the body does automatically. So for example, um, if you put food in a dog's mouth or your mouth, you know, or most animals for that matter, um, it does produce a salivary response. There's really nothing you can do to stop that from happening. Happening, It's automatic. You don't have to think about it. So we've got an unconditioned stimulus, something, uh, you know, something in the environment that is unlearned, that automatically produces an unconditioned, unlearned response. Uh, that no teaching or learning has happened yet at that point. Um, but during the acquisition phase, where there actually is learning happening, uh, you have to repeatedly pair some sort of neutral stimulus, and we call this a neutral stimulus to start out with because if you just ring a bell without any training, a dog is not going to drool. Um, so you actually could test that out uh, during testing trials prior to conditioning. There should be no response if you're if you're ringing a bell initially. But Pavlov over and over again would ring the bell and then immediately afterwards present dogs with food. Um, and of course, because the food's being presented, that produces the unconditioned response of the salivation. Because here we got the unlearned stimulus again, an unlearned response. But over time, if there's enough repeated pairings of those things, eventually the neutral stimulus will become a conditioned stimulus because it alone will start to evoke the response that once was evoked by the unconditioned stimulus. So the bell, our CS, or conditioned learned stimulus, now creates a CR, a conditioned response or a learned response because the dog has to learn to salivate in response to the bell. That's not something that it initially um, starts with. So a couple things, when you're working through your worksheet doing practice items on this stuff, um, keep in mind the UCR and the CR are always going to be the same behavior. Um, whatever is the natural reaction to something else will become a learned reaction to a neutral stimulus that you're introducing. So oftentimes it's easiest for people to start out identifying the CR and you can kind of use that to backtrack to figure out what the UCR was. Whatever the CR is um, has to be something that um, like at, at one time was elicited by something else naturally. That's not always listed in examples, so you might have to think through it a little bit. Um, but you've got a chance to do some practice items on this and uh, you'll get some help uh, from your substitute teacher. We'll be going over uh, answers to these practice items next time I see you. Um, so take care to work through them as carefully as you can. You can refer back to this video, which I posted in Canvas for you. Uh, if you need to look at it again, uh, your textbook also has some great examples of this. Uh, but we're going to be trying to figure out from a bunch of real life examples, the, identifying from those examples what the UCS, UCR, CS, and CR will be. Always the UCS is the unlearned thing that's creating response. UCR, learn, the unlearned response. The CS begins as a neutral stimulus, but later evokes a response. So in Pavlov's classic work, this bell uh, became our CS because it had elicited 
elicited salivation at the conclusion of the of the conditioning. So I hope you have good luck. Uh, Ron Swanson and I uh, are gonna call it a night. <laughs>